not being able to sweat or sweating very little even during exercise is a pretty clear sign something is off in your biochemistry. In this video I'll go over some of the key reasons why this is happening and we will talk about electrolyte balance, thyroid health, speed of metabolism and what you can do to improve all of them so you're able to sweat again. To start off, why is sweating even important in the first place? The most straightforward answer is, of course, temperature regulation. When you exercise or find yourself in a hot environment, your body produces sweat to cool you down. Without sweating, your core temperature would rise to a point where heat exhaustion overwhelms your body. Basically, sweating is your natural air conditioning system. On top of that, you also eliminate certain harmful substances through your sweat. The skin can eliminate plastics, heavy metals, and other waste products that might otherwise stay in your fatty tissue or have to be processed by your liver. In our modern times, where pollutants are all over the place, this becomes more and more important. It's also one of the reasons regular sauna visits help with all kinds of health markers. We will talk about that later in the video. And lastly, sweating promotes healthier skin. When you sweat, your pores open up, which allows dirt and oils to escape. This can help clear up acne and prevent clogged pores, which leads to clearer skin over time. When you don't sweat regularly, you lose all of these health benefits, and while some people naturally sweat less than others, sweating very little or not at all, even during intense exercise, is not a good sign. Let me now explain three common reasons why this is happening and how you can fix them. The first reason is an electrolyte deficiency. Electrolytes are minerals that can carry an electrical charge in your body. When they dissolve in water, they break down into ions, which are molecules with a positive or negative charge. The most important electrolytes include sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, phosphate, and bicarbonate. You get all of these electrolytes from the food you eat and the water you drink. Unlike macronutrients like proteins, carbs, and fats, Electrolytes are part of the micronutrient category, so you need them in smaller amounts. But that doesn't make them less important. Without electrolytes, you would die because they are critical for energy production. Sodium and potassium set up an electrical charge in your cells, which is necessary for the production of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, the energy currency in our cells. So without the right balance of electrolytes, your cells cannot produce energy. And electrolytes are also crucial for muscle contractions. For example, calcium contracts the muscle, while magnesium is needed to relax it afterwards. On top of that, most electrolytes also function as cofactors in specific enzymes. So for instance, without magnesium, your body cannot properly digest and process carbohydrates. Now, how much electrolytes are lost when you sweat? The answer is it depends. Sodium is the most heavily lost electrolyte when you sweat, with the others coming after that. In one study, the sweat was measured and an average of 600 milligrams per hour was lost at sodium, 125 milligrams per hour for potassium, and only 2.5 milligrams per hour for magnesium. This gives you a rough idea, but the exact electrolyte loss will depend on several factors, like the intensity of your exercise, your own electrolyte levels, and of course the environment. The hotter your environment and the more intense your exercise, the more you naturally sweat and the more you lose electrolytes. If your own electrolyte levels are low, your body will try to retain them and therefore downregulate your sweating. So that's why an electrolyte deficiency is often one of the main causes for decreased sweating. Your body simply doesn't want to lose more of them. The problem is that electrolyte loss isn't just about replacing one specific mineral. Although sodium is the most obvious one, you lose other minerals like potassium, magnesium, and calcium as well. Therefore, if you only focused on sodium, this would lead to imbalances over time. In fact, electrolyte balance is often more important than total electrolyte levels. Having too much of one electrolyte can disrupt the function of the others. For example, if you overload on calcium without having enough magnesium, it can cause some serious imbalances that will lead to muscle twitching and an inability for the muscles to relax. I explain how to rebalance your electrolytes in a different video, but here's some general tips. First, make sure to get enough quality salt in your diet. This means unprocessed salt, so sea salt or something similar. People who don't suffer from high blood pressure can aim for around a teaspoon of salt per day, half of which would be sodium. 
That is about the RDA of 2300 milligrams. For potassium, you want to make sure to eat enough vegetables and other quality potassium sources. At 4700 milligrams, the RDA for potassium is very high and a lot of people are not meeting it. If you increase your sodium intake, you always want to balance it with more potassium. Also keep in mind that your adrenal glands are super important for sodium and potassium retention. That's because of aldosterone, which is produced in your adrenal glands. It helps manage your sodium and potassium levels. So if your adrenals are overworked, your body may struggle to retain them, even if your intake is fine. The magnesium deficiency is also very widespread. More than half of adults are borderline magnesium deficient, especially if they're athletes. Symptoms of low magnesium include muscle cramps and general fatigue. Many people don't realize it until they start supplementing and feel the difference. To be honest, nowadays almost every athlete needs a magnesium supplement. Lastly, we also need to talk about calcium, which is a tricky one. Even though it is necessary for muscle function, too much of it can lead to tissue calcification, especially if your body doesn't process it correctly. So please watch my video on calcium supplements before you start taking high doses. Okay, so the second reason you might not be sweating is a slow thyroid or an overall sluggish metabolism. Your metabolism is governed mostly by your thyroid and adrenal glands. Together, they control your temperature and overall energy output. Now, if either of them isn't working properly, your body might struggle to sweat when it needs to. We already talked about the adrenal glands, so let's now talk about your thyroid. When your thyroid is underactive, your body's energy production slows down, which can cause a lack of sweating. You will also feel fatigued and cold, especially in your hands and feet. Thyroid issues are a lot more common than you might think. While hypothyroidism can only be diagnosed by a doctor, there are many people with normal thyroid hormone levels in the blood who still show signs of a slow thyroid. Even mild thyroid issues can impact your sweat production and you don't have to have full-blown hypothyroidism for this. This is also where nutrient deficiencies come into play. They will affect how your body regulates temperature and how it produces sweat. The most important players for your thyroid are iodine and selenium. These two minerals are required to produce thyroid hormones, which regulate your metabolism. Without enough iodine and without enough selenium, your thyroid can function properly and you will sweat less than you should. Usually iodine gets most of the attention, but selenium is just as important when you want to ensure your thyroid produces the hormones that you need. If you decide to supplement one, always balance it with the other. Otherwise, your body cannot convert the mostly inactive T4 into its active T3. Another mineral that is key for producing thyroid hormones is iron, and iron deficiency is often associated with hypothyroidism. Similar to calcium though, Low iron in the blood does not necessarily mean you need an iron supplement. This is explained in a different video in more detail. The third and final reason why you don't sweat can be problems with your temperature regulation. Your body's ability to regulate its own temperature will of course affect your sweating. Temperature regulation issues also often stem from a sluggish metabolism, so this should improve as you fix the things we already talked about. A great way to improve your temperature regulation is regularly using a sauna. Saunas raise your core temperature in a controlled environment and over time they help your body learn to sweat more. Many people find that after regular sauna use, they start sweating more even when they're not in the sauna anymore. On top of that, they also promote better circulation, which helps your blood transport nutrients to all areas of your body. Regularly hitting the sauna will over time also decongest your skin. If your skin is congested with oils, toxins, or dead skin cells, your sweat glands will clog up. Keeping your skin clear will help sweat flow more freely. And dry brushing is another great tool for this, because it not only declogs your skin, but also improves lymph flow at the same time. Of course, if you have electrolyte deficiencies, make sure to work on those first and only gradually increase the length of your sauna sessions. For most people, Issues like electrolyte imbalance or a slow thyroid are the main underlying reasons why they're not sweating. And regular sauna use can only help kickstart the sweating process again. And that's pretty much it. If you're not sweating as much as you should be, then it is often due to one of the factors I mentioned in this video. Usually it's nutrient deficiencies that affect your electrolyte levels or your thyroid function. 
And over time, this leads to your body having problems with its temperature regulation. Once you address these underlying factors, your temperature regulation will improve and you naturally start to sweat more.